Hi there! As you might know, during an older video of mine, I explained why USB Type-C is awesome. And just recently, I released a video about how to make your own DIY USB Type-C power delivery trigger boards. And spoiler warning, it was certainly not a simple programming task. That is why I was a bit scared about the next USB Type-C subject I wanted to tackle which is about creating a DIY USB Type-C PD power bank. The reasons are comprehensible, I think. For pure DIY solution, I would not only have to program the PD protocol negotiations so that the power bank can act as a source to supply power and as a sink to charge up its internal lithium-ion battery pack, but obviously, I would also have to manage its battery pack by charging it up correctly and adding all kinds of safety features. So I said to myself, why do I make everything always so complicated? And that is why in this video, I will keep it simple and show you my journey of finding the perfect power bank IC for this task, for which coincidentally a ready-to-use PCB already exists. Then I will test this PCB extensively and finally use it in combination with some lithium ion cells I had laying around and a custom 3D printed enclosure in order to create a simple yet super useful USB Type-C PD power bank. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who provide excellent quality PCBs for a very low price. I've been using their service for years and can surely recommend it. So why not upload your Gerber files today in order to test out their service. Like pretty much always when it comes to finding a special IC, I visited LCSC, who offer thousands of them. There I searched in the PMIC battery management section, where I got 930 results. And thus it took me a couple of hours to find an IC I was happy with. But eventually I found the IP5328P, which is according to its English datasheet, a fully integrated bidirectional PD 3.0 and fast charge power bank SOC. Sounds complicated, but in a nutshell that means it got quick charge functionality, supports USB power delivery with 5V and 9V as an input, and 5V, 9V and most importantly 12V as an output, with up to 18W of power, which is most of the time enough for my portable projects. It also comes with all the battery protection features you need for lithium ion batteries. And as a bonus, it can even drive LEDs to show the remaining capacity of the battery pack. Simply put, this was the IC I was looking for. But while going through the 28 pages of the datasheet, I started to realize that creating a PCB design for this IC might get a bit complicated. So just for fun, I searched for this IC on AliExpress and quickly found a PCB based around this IC, which not only looked promising according to its picture and the functional description text, but the price was also quite tempting. That is why I could not resist and ordered one, which after unpacking made a positive impression concerning its PCB and solder quality. The only question was whether this PCB could fulfill all the features I was hoping for. And by that I mean how fast can it charge up its battery pack, how much current can it supply at which voltage level with the power delivery, how efficient is the circuit while doing all of that, and does the charging of the battery pack with all of its protection features work. So let's start off with the charging test, for which I got this USB Type-C PD charger and this common phone charger that supports quick charge. Before hooking the chargers up though, I grabbed myself an old lithium ion cell I had laying around and connected its two terminals to my power meter and the B plus and B minus terminal of the PCB. 
Then I started the charging tests by shoving a USB tester into the phone charger, plugging all of that into an outlet and connecting the charger to the board with a micro USB cable. As you can see, a quick charge seems to work fine. Since the phone charger provides 9.2 volts with a current of around 1.8 amps, which is even above the charger's limits. That equals an input power of around 16.5 watts. While the battery only gets charged up with a power of around 13.7 watts. Which means that the efficiency is around 83% and thus certainly acceptable. And if you're wondering if we use a USB Type-C cable for the phone charger, then the voltage and current values pretty much stay the same. Now, if we replace the phone charger with the USB Type-C PD charger and hook up all the cables, then we can find out that here the voltage is also 9.2 volts, but with a slightly smaller current value of 1.7 amps, which was not the charger's limit. So, I guess an input power of around 16 watts is the maximum. That is not too bad considering that my small commercial USB Type-C power bank only features a slightly higher input power limit. Now since I later want to add a battery pack with a capacity of 74 watt hours, it means that the overall charging time would take around 4.6 hours in my case. And considering that the circuit draws a standby current of only 54 microamps, the battery pack will never run empty. But anyway, while charging up the battery, I not only realized that the LED indicator worked just fine and the charging method of the lithium ion battery was suitable, but also that the overcharge cutoff voltage was around 4.23 volts and thus still acceptable. So, all in all, I was pretty happy with the charging slash input features of the boards. And thus, it was time for the output tests. I started by hooking up a USB Type-C PD trigger board to the circuits, which, as you can see, can cycle between 5V, 9V and 12V without a problem. That is why next I hooked up a constant load to the output in order to test whether the circuit can truly output the current that it promised in its description text. And to my surprise, the circuit was truly capable of outputting the promised 3.1 amps at 5 volts, 2 amps at 9 volts and 1.5 amps at 12 volts. And while doing this test, I not only measured the output power, but also the power the battery had to provide, which later let me create this beautiful graph. As you can see, the efficiency of the converter pretty much always stayed at around 80% and only one time dipped down to around 75%, which is pretty decent. Last but not least, for the discharge test, I let the circuit charge up my Nintendo Switch. And while doing so, I monitored the voltage of the lithium ion battery. As you can see, at a voltage of around 2.9 volts, the circuit cuts the power output, which was a suitable cutoff voltage value. So, all in all, I can say that I was also happy with the discharge slash output test and thus it was time to turn the circuit into a proper power bank. For that, I firstly got myself the 6 NCR18650B lithium ion cells, which I salvaged from an old battery pack. For this power bank, we need to connect them all in parallel to basically form one big battery. But let me tell you that this is only possible because they were previously used together and their voltage values only differ very slightly with a value of around 0.03 volts from one another. If you would stick together random cells you got laying around, then this could end very badly. You have been warned. But nevertheless, I positioned all my cells into 18650 plastic spacers before I connected them with one another through the help of some nickel strips and my K-Weld spot welder. As soon as that was done, all I had to do was to solder a wire to the plus and minus terminal 
and connect them to the PCB according to this rather easy to follow wiring diagram. And that is basically how you can make a super simple USB Type-C PD power bank. But of course, a proper enclosure was still missing. So I measured the dimensions of the PCB and the battery pack and within a couple of hours created this enclosure for it all in Fusion 360. After then 3D printing this housing with my 3D printer and some awesome looking PLA filaments, I hot glued the battery pack inside the enclosure, secured the PCB with screws, once again soldered the battery wires to the PCB and finally closed everything up and used some more screws and nuts to keep everything together. And just like that you can easily build your own USB Type-C PD power bank, which according to its specifications sits right between my two other USB Type-C PD power banks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!